All right, guys, so something's going on today. We actually have a situation because the streaming PC that I've been using for probably the last year or so is failing. For some reason, we blue screen almost every single time we try to stream from it. And when I say we, I mean me and Paul because we stream every Tuesday for awesome hardware. And I'm very nervous because today is our 200th episode, which marks a very special milestone for the series. And Paul's coming over here today to stream at my house. Now, normally I would go through the troubleshooting steps in order to narrow down the issue. But since I'm a little bit strapped for time, since Paul will be here in just a few mere hours, I figured I would just build a new system from scratch because that sounds funner. So I just want to make sure we're on the same page with the product messaging since you'll be taking over while Kyle's out of town on another vacation. No problem. I make it good for you, Joshy Poo. Uh, right. So at first glance, the Ion Plus seems like your typical power supply, but in fact... It... I know. It has a zero RPM fan. I thought Kyle was the only one with zero fan. <laughs> Technically, that means it runs quiet, but you're not wrong, though. Ultra Frex cable for easy routing. That's no good. Cables need to be stiff like a dictator regime. Uh, please do not say that in the video. Ch Japanese capacitor? How much did I charge you? I get you Chinese capacitor half prime. That would definitely cheapen the product. Exactly. Grab me on the same page now. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Dictator regime. Fractal Design delivers with the Ion Plus power supply. Uh, supply. Click on the link below to learn more. So this is the PC that we're working with, and it's no slouch by any stretch. We have a Core i7-7820X, I believe, which is an eight-core, 16-thread part. Definitely one of the oddball, silly parts that uh, Intel rolled out within Skylake X. Uh, we did have 16 gigs, I'm sorry, 32 gigs of DDR4 in here, uh, which you can see the original kit was right here. You can see I've already tried to do some troubleshooting with the memory, still blue screening with those sticks. Uh, we also have an RTX 2060 Super, that's a Founders Edition card, and we are running an Elgato 4K60 capture card. The case is a Thermaltake View 37, which has been a fine case. I mean, it, nothing's been overheating. Temps are actually really good in this system. However, it's a little bit, it's a little bit bulky, especially to be putting underneath my desk. Speaking of which, I would like the next system to be elevated off the floor just a little bit because there's really not much room elsewhere on the desk that you can see. I mean, I could put it on here, but that's also a bit narrow and other things are currently occupying it. So I want to go with a smaller case so we can either get a really little shelf that I don't have right now. I'll have to buy that on, on a different day. I'll have to get a shelf here and then just put the system on top of there. Or I'll even just like have a really small tiny shelf and I'll still have the system under the desk but it'll at least be elevated off the floor a few inches. That's probably the route we're gonna have to take today which means I am gonna need a smaller case than this fairly large mid tower. To do that we're gonna need hardware and hardware I have my friends. Now this is a system that I built recently for a completely different video that's probably already up on YouTube I think and I've already decided that I'm gonna steal this case which is the Fantex Eclipse P400A. This is the non-digital RGB version so it only has one fan at the front one at the back. I'll probably add more fans in there just to get additional airflow. I love the fine mesh and it's relatively compact for a mid tower so it's going to fit under the desk just fine even with a little pedestal perhaps. There is a Ryzen 3600 in there right now but that's probably not quite enough horsepower for our needs but I do like the idea of X570. We are going to use the same memory kit from the last build which is a 32 gig kit of G-Skill Trident Z non-RGB at 3200 speed which I would generally recommend 3600 especially if you're gaming on Ryzen 3000 but all things considered I think this will be just fine. Okay so we have memory and case picked out. Let's see what else we got here and this is actually perfect timing because wifey sauce just two days ago took apart like five or six systems in the house that have just been building up over time and we haven't boxed up the individual components yet so they're all just strewn about the house. Yeah, it's kind of a disaster right now, but it's also sort of perfect because I feel like I'm at a PC enthusiast farmer's market. It's, it's awesome. So let's just go ahead and peruse here and see what we have. Starting with, I guess, CPU is probably important. Uh, so it looks like if we're going for Ryzen 3000, there's only one Ryzen 3000 chip here, which is... What are you? Focus. I won't... I can't see unless you focus, camera. Oh, oh I'm blind. Oh, it's so terrible. Come on. Oh, just, just, just get in there. Ah. 3700X, perfect. Eight core, 16 thread CPU. Now we're not going up or down on the core thread count from our 7820X, but a much newer and more exciting platform. And I'm kind of just curious to see how this thing holds up to all the streaming demands that we have for awesome hardware. Uh, motherboard, we're gonna need X570, which could be that. I think that's a Crosshair 8. We also have Tai Chi, X570 Tai Chi from Azric. I love this part. This part's so sexy. But I think this is the press version. So if you look at the screws on the M.2 cover plate, those are not Phillips head. That is like a torque screw. The retail version of this board has Phillips head. 
not Torx. And I remember there being some issues with this board that were not present on the retail version. So I would totally use it if this is the retail model, which again, I do have that, but it's in a box somewhere in the garage. So I, it's just not worth my time. Let's go back to this one. This is a Crosshair 8 Formula Asus ROG. I'm not gonna be custom water cooling or anything. So it's a bit of a waste of features here. It's still a great board nonetheless. And it's ATX, which means it's gonna fit inside of the P400A just fine. Is there already an SSD? Is there already an SSD under here? I don't know if YV Sauce got all the SSDs. Let's take a look. And... Nothing. So we're gonna need an SSD, preferably NVMe M.2, maybe even PCIe Gen 4 if we're lucky. So I'm gonna put this back in the studio right now, just to help organize a bit. Might as well just build as we go, right? And good. Next up, we need a cooler. So let's go find a cooler. I think we should go CLC. Liquid AIO would be good. And I believe I did see Aha, a Corsair Hydro Series, 240 millimeter liquid AIO. I don't know, is there any LED or RGB on here? I don't care. Ooh, wifey sauce even removed the thermal paste. Good job, honey. Now these are not the stock fans that come with this cooler. These are actually stolen off of the ROG Ryujin, the uh, Noctuas, the Noctuas baby, the uh, NFF12s. These are really nice fans. Let's go ahead and just steal these. All right, I'm going in. If you'll just give me a second here. AIO installed, let's find an SSD. Now the drive is actually a much needed upgrade because the existing streaming system only had a 256 gig SSD in it, which was terrible. Anytime Paul and I wanted to install a game for awesome hardware or whatever, we had to use my external SSD, which is a less than graceful solution. So now I'm looking for at least 500 gigs. One terabyte would be ideal, but I'll settle for 500. Let's see what we got here. Now, of course we could go with a smaller SSD for our boot drive and then a mechanical drive for additional storage, but that's also an additional component that we have to install, more cable clutter and that sort of thing. We do have an M.2 drive here, RD400, I believe, from Toshiba OC. Z, but this is a 256, 256. That's just not gonna cut it. So we have to look elsewhere, perhaps in this Tai Chi motherboard, if Wifey Sauce forgot to remove a drive from here, which I would imagine she did because again, stupid torque screw and I don't see any torque screws on this table, which means she did not crack this open yet, which means we should. I wanna say T7, we'll give that a shot. Do we have contact? Yes, we do, it's a fit. And there's only one torque screw we have to undo here because I lost the other two. All right, moment of truth, nothing. Okay, well that's just kind of unfortunate because, <gasps> wait, oh, you sneaky bastard. Come here, you little bugger. This is an Aorus 500 gig PCIe Gen 4 M.2 SSD with a five-sun controller. This'll do. <laughs> SSD installed, and now we're ready for case installation. Not that we have to install a case, but we have to install this into the case, which means we have to take all the stuff that's in the case outside of the case, and then we can continue. So let's do that. And now for the old one-handed glass removal. <laughs> nailed it. All right, little PC, we're gonna gut you like a fish. things are coming along just dandily. The motherboard went in no problem. I did have to do a quick change of plans, however, because I initially wanted the radiator to go on top of the case, just for no particular reason. That's just how I had the fans oriented. But then I quickly realized there was a clearance issue with the VRM water block and our radiator and fan setup. Uh, that's to be expected in a case this size. Again, it's, it's more on the compact size for a mid tower. So I had no problem switching the fans around to reposition the radiator at the front of the case, which it looks just fine right there. That does mean I had to remove the 120 millimeter pre-installed fan, but I decided to put it to good use as an additional exhaust fan at the top of the case. So now we have two 120s at the rear, two 120s at the front. So we more or less have neutral air pressure going through our case. Oh, I totally forgot about the power supply. I'm using the existing unit that was already in the system. It's a Seasonic S12 II 500 watt power supply, which is going to be more than adequate. And I think all we need now is GPU. Wow, what are we, what are we gonna do for our GPU? Paul and I uh, tend to game at 1440p when we're doing the live show. So I'm actually gonna go with this bad boy right here, which I used in a, in a really recent build. This is the RTX 2070 Super Gaming X Trio from MSI. And I think it'll, I think it's gonna just like, it's gonna look really big inside of this case because it's a fairly sizable card. It's quite beefy, but it's a fast card. It's a quiet card and we have the power to drive it. So let's go ahead and see if it fits. Uh, <sighs> there you are, big boy. Come here, buddy. Shaloop. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's going in. Ah, uh, come on. All right, I think I got it. I think that's in. Let 
minutes ago. We're almost done. We're almost done. We're almost done. It's the final countdown. You know, the true cable management test is when you can put the side panel on with one hand. Well, if you can even lift it with one hand, you don't even have to apply any additional pressure to get the side panel closed. That's how you do it. That's how it's done, boys. All right, she done. And she look good. She look real good. But before I put the glass panel on, I'm going to see if she boots because I built this in a mad dash and with one hand most of the time. So this should be interesting. Oh, shoot. I forgot something. Hold on. I forgot. I forgot the friggin Elgato, the capture card. I need the capture card. That's why yeah, it needs to go in there. Okay. But before I do that, I have to shut the system down. And before I shut the system down, I have to back up all the precious files or exploit presentations and things like that. So let me back up the system really quick. <laughs> Easy. Come to Papa. Almost. Uh, there we go. Oh, gotcha. Why do I sound so sinister? I'd say sorry that it's kind of dark and blurry right now, but I don't care. A screwdriver sucks my ball sack. Come on, screw. You got this, buddy. You got this. You're better than this. You got it. I believe in you. <laughs> We're done. Okay, circling back to the new system now. We're all ready for Windows 10 installation with our little USB stick here. We're just gonna go ahead and boot from this and be underway. Na 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 Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Okay, I originally thought that this was a 500 gig NVMe SSD that I was putting in here, but I must be on the devil juice today or something because look at this, it's not 500 gig, it's, it's two, 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 oh my We're done with drivers and programs installation. We're pretty much good to go. All we need is a pedestal for this thing to sit on so that it's not sucking up the bottom most filth on my floor. I have no idea how tall that pedestal needs to be though. Let's do a quick measurement. Okay, yeah, we have about 27 inches and we'll just call this 19 to be safe. So we're looking for a pedestal around eight inches or so, give or take. Hmm, pedestal, pedestal. Now it doesn't have to be an actual pedestal because I, I doubt we actually have one of those, but maybe like a box, some sort of box that might, I'm gonna bring this with me. How about you motherboard box? Nope. Too small. You know, honestly, I think I'm gonna have to use a case. I think a case makes the most sense. Uh, now this is kind of a nice case. I don't wanna use this one, even though it's like the perfect height. I don't think that one's deep enough. That's too big. That's too small. Did I try this one yet? Let's see. It's about seven inches versus seven and 17 and a half. I think this might work actually. Okay. This is the Del Vostro pre-built PC that I bought on Craigslist a few months back for the GTX 1050 Ti upgrade video. It's just collecting dust now. Literally, maybe I'll use this. All right, first of all, let me make sure that Wifey Sauce removed all the parts she was supposed to. Yes, GPU and memory are gone. Good job, honey. All right, here, yep, I need to do cable management. I understand, I'm a terrible person. Okay. Moment of truth. Let's, oh wait, you know, I should put the side panel on first. Damn it. Uh, okay. Height clearance is good. Oh yeah, it fits on there. It's like it was meant to do this job. Beautiful. All right, let's wire the sucker up. <laughs> All right, y'all, she's all done looking pretty. Look at that, beautiful. Yeah, I'm on the floor, I'm on the floor right now. This is what it takes to be a master cinematographer, okay? But everything's looking really good. So hopefully now we have a stable and reliable PC for tonight's live stream. But there's still much to do. So I'm gonna get out of your hair, guys. I've got a plan for the show. I also have things to do around the house that Wifey Sauce has assigned me. So thanks for watching the video. Toss a like on it if you enjoyed it and get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. I will see you guys. After I do laundry, I have to do laundry now. This is my life. <laughs>